So I'm uh, going to try something here that I'm not totally sure how this is going to work or how well it's going to go over, but um, I have had uh, folks asking in other um, private messages and other channels on Patreon about um, releasing some actual speed footage of painting. And a lot of it that I've been recording lately, I do record at full speed and then uh, convert to a time lapse later. So I did have um, some footage to, to pull to put something up like this. Um, thing is that when I'm working, it would be nice if I was like describing what I'm doing, but it's, it's really kind of like a different headspace to be in. Um, like I've done live demos and, and it's, it's always a little bit, uh, I feel like it affects the painting a little bit to be speaking and, and describing and conversing. Um, whereas when I'm painting in my studio, I can really kind of focus in or I can have uh, something on that I'm listening to that kind of distracts my attention. So I wanted to share something like this, but at the same time, I didn't want to be, um, I don't know, I, I, I didn't want it to just be completely absent of sound and I think I'm going to try and just uh, talk about things that um, might be interesting or might not be. So if if you're just here to, to watch the paint strokes, uh, put it on mute, put on your some of your favorite music, um, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm just going to kind of ramble. But... Um, I figured, you know, maybe I'll talk a little bit about what is going on uh, as I'm working here. But honestly, I don't know if that would be very useful for me to do continuously throughout. This this sequence is going to be about a half an hour. Um, and this was doing a portrait um, in an a illustration I was doing based on Escape from New York. Uh, the whole video was put up on my Patreon and it is still locked up, but my Patreon is in a kind of like a um, transitional state right now where everything I'm putting up going forward is going to be completely free and public, uh, but some of the older videos are still locked up. I'm just still kind of like figuring out what I want to do with the that older stuff, but I never released this as a, um, as a real-time video. Uh, you know, video of, of the portrait being painted. So um, the the concept of the painting, though, was just I was doing a piece inspired by the movie Escape from New York, which is a movie that I really love going back as far as I truly can remember. Um, we used to play the Escape from New York board game with my dad when I was way too young to really be <laughs> playing uh uh, complex board games like that, like Candyland Age. My dad was like, you're going to learn how to play Escape from New York. And um, and so, yeah, I grew up really just kind of like loving this movie. And um, this painting was really just uh, something that I did for, for my own enjoyment, something that I thought would be fun to do. And um, the portrait is representative of my typical process. Uh, this may be actually changing as we speak, but for many years now, this has been my process, which where we came in here, I had already laid down the um, very basic landmarks of the shapes uh, of the, of the, you know, you could see even in the background here indicated these um, digital readout numbers behind him. Uh, and, and you can see at the start of this, the, uh, facial features, the shape of the, the head and the hair, the eye patch, all that stuff, just kind of a, a general kind of, um, structure. And then going in, uh, on top of that and putting down like a color wash and that kind of sets the stage for me. That's where I would consider my underpainting to be, uh, complete and it's ready to move into doing the, the full, uh, full render piece. And for many years now, I've enjoyed doing that as just a, um, uh, I, I've enjoyed doing that as a single session. I'm trying to think, Alla prima, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, 
in, with, a, with a kind of an ala prima mindset of wet on wet, uh, just kind of working relatively thin and building up um, those layers uh, in wet on wet paint. And, you know, you can see I work with a lot of kind of square edged brushes. Um, and yeah, I, I really truly don't know that I have too much to say about that uh, that isn't going to be more evident from just kind of watching what I'm doing here. Um, I start with a general mid-tone, start massing in uh, tones with, you know, um, the, the shadows being kind of where I tend to go first, and then just kind of refining and building it out from there. Uh, and that's basically what you're going to see for the next 25 minutes or so. Um, so I also was going to answer a question that uh, was left on my Patreon. Um, let me pull that up. Okay, I have a question from Ming, and I was waiting to get back to this one. I could uh, speak at more length about it. Um, I had mentioned in a, a post or a video about uh, a change in my process, um, which is something that has happened a couple of times in the course of, my, you know, I've been painting. I graduated school in 2004, uh, and I was working in galleries since 2003. So I've been making some form of a living as an artist for about 20 years now. Um, and I uh, got into doing illustration, probably I would say like 2006 was when my first illustration jobs maybe started coming in. And then it was like a couple of years before it. Uh, like I remember my first magic pieces were in 2008. You know, so there was, there was like a period of time um, where I was like, getting my footing and, um, you know, trying to get work with bigger and better clients than the, the uh, earliest jobs that I was able to get. And um, over the years, in those, those early days, uh, I was working in a very kind of meticulous style. And then I was doing some experimental pieces uh, that led to a change in my process, and that happened in 2012. But let me read Ming's question here. Um, so I had mentioned something about that, and he responded with, uh, curious what initiates you to explore and adjust painting styles. Uh, is it a gut feeling that you want to evoke? Excuse me, is it a gut feeling that you want to evolve? Or is it a, oh wow, I'm glad I tried and discovered this. Your painterly technique with those loose brush strokes is what drew me to your art, in particular how you show movement in your fire. Um, da, 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 da. Can't wait to see how your style continues to evolve. So I mean, basically just asking, um, I, I, what I'm getting from this is, is it a conscious decision to shift your style or is it just something that kind of happens over time? Uh, so for me, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, I think that it was a, a weird combination of both, um, because I think that that it ultimately is what style comes from, is a combination between the things that you're trying to control and the things that you have little to no control over. Um, when I first started, I was coming out of a program that was a very traditional, uh, it was not an atelier, but it was a, almost in the style of an atelier program. Uh, I went to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, which um, at the time I was there was a non-accredited four-year art school that just taught really uh, painting, sculpture, and printmaking were the three majors available. And um, my, uh, my mom and my stepdad are professional illustrators who do fantasy art. And so, of course, like I grew up uh, watching them work and, and seeing kind of in general, like how they did what they did. But I didn't really start learning how to paint until I went to school. Um, I was 
doing life drawing and things like that. But it was when I went to PAFA that I first really did any study of painting. And the, the teachers that I had at that school really kind of focused on this, um, this more traditional uh, academic approach. Um, of course, not every teacher taught exactly the same approach, but that was the basics that I got. And so when I came, like as I was emerging from that program, it was a little bit at odds with what I wanted to be doing uh, because they were teaching this more painterly, uh, brushy kind of style. And I was more interested in the kind of work that my that my mom was doing and that my stepdad were doing, which was much tighter uh, kind of like fantasy realism. And so when they... When, when I was finishing up, uh, they offered to, you know, kind of show me their process. Um, and I was, you know, starting to, I was working in galleries, but I was also much more interested in doing illustration uh, than making a career as a gallery artist. And I decided to, um, you know, kind of learn what, what their process was, uh, my, my parents' process was. And honestly, like, I think that that's the thing when you're starting out as an artist, you need some sort of a roadmap to get from idea to complete image. And so having uh, teachers that can sit you down and show you what their route is that they, that they take to do that is incredibly helpful because it shows you not only this is, this is how it is done um, and you can do this, but you can also start to, to get confidence in this will work. You know, if, if I follow these steps, I'm watching this person show me that you can follow these steps and it will get you to um, a finished result. So they, uh, they showed me what their, their method was at that time, which was a very tight, um, underpainting executed. So you start with a, a, a pencil drawing and then, uh, you put acrylic washes over top of that, which, uh, serve two purposes of first, uh, sealing the, the graphite, uh, like creating a protective layer over the graphite. And then also you could build up a kind of like a tonal underpainting with, with that um, acrylic. And then going over top with very small brushes and uh, rendering out the, the painting. And so, you know, it was a process that it works. Uh, it is absolutely, you know, a, a useful process. It's a viable way to, especially for what I was wanting to do at that time, which was very tight rendered and polished. Um, it was a good way to get there. But as I, you know, kind of developed over the following years, for one thing, my taste started to change. I became a little bit less um, enamored with the uh, tight render and a little bit more interested in more kind of like painterly strokes, the, the kind of stuff, honestly, that they were trying to teach me at school, but that at that time I was just a little bit like, um, I wasn't, I guess I was, wasn't ready for it yet. I was a little more resistant to that way of doing things. Um, but I'm glad that I went through that education because it really served to help me out later when I was ready for it. Uh, I think it was, you know, going to, to see at the Brandywine Art Museum, which used to have this enormous room full of N.C. Wyeth paintings. Uh, they've really trimmed it back now and there's way fewer, which is a shame. Uh, but there were all these, um, in particular, paintings from Treasure Island. And I just remember like going to see those in my uh, very early 20s and just being really taken by the the economy of the strokes and the expressiveness and the, the energy of it and everything and um you know it it really kind of made me question what my work might look like if i decided to start kind of exploring that and so i began a series of paintings that were very small little five by seven inch panels with um uh just basically like figure paintings on them 
And it, I had no idea what I was doing or where it was going other than I'm going to do a handful of these and see uh, if, you know, if they're fun, I'll do more and see what it would be like to work in a, a less uptight style is kind of what I was thinking. So when I look back at the earliest ones I did, they're really still very uptight. Um, and I think that my work has never really gotten that loose compared to where some other folks take it. But uh, it, it really was kind of like a, a place where I could experiment and just fool around with um, different, different materials and different techniques and applications. And because I was still working with galleries at that time, uh, there was a local gallery in Philadelphia that I was doing shows with fairly regularly. And so I always was like, you know, I was at that point like building my illustration career, but also finding um, this this uh, stuff I was doing for the galleries was a good place where I could really kind of experiment without having to worry about uh, if the client was getting what they were expecting to get. Because with the gallery, it was really, you know, much more free form. And um, that let me, I, I really kind of uh, developed on the side this process that is is what I'm still using today, um, which was not entirely different from the original process, you know, but instead of doing this tight pencil drawing and then a, a meticulous acrylic wash on top, I started thinking about like, how do I streamline this? Do I really need all this? Because Honestly, like it just was starting to feel really confining and it was feeling like a lot of, I, I guess I just was looking for more efficiency and it was feeling like a lot of the steps I was doing were um, just maybe not entirely necessary and I wasn't entirely enjoying the meticulous nature of it. Uh, and what I realized is all I really needed was this kind of structural diagram and um you know and of course I'm, I'm always working from uh some some form of reference and so you know if i have a structural diagram so i know like the precision of my forms is is going to be correct and i've got something to look at to to give me um confidence of how i'm going to develop and create volume in in the you know kind of like the tones and and um you know, value relationships and that kind of thing, um, then I can really kind of start with a much simpler place, which is is just that like very kind of minimalist, uh, you know, it, I, I very quickly abandoned the pencil altogether and was just like, I should just do this in paint, put down my, uh, you know, structural drawing in paint and then um, quick wash of color on top. I don't think I started doing that right away. I think that came later, but it really was just a matter of like, on the one hand, I was intentionally shifting things because I was starting to feel um, interested in other things. And on the other hand, it was also acknowledging that this process, which I had been uh, taught from other artists who were very comfortable with that process, it wasn't necessarily uh, something that fit my temperament real well. It was just a process that I'd been taught. And over time, I got comfortable enough with it and with um, understanding my own self and needs to start tailoring it to, to fit more the way that I uh, naturally want to work. And, and that's where I, I think like a lot of style kind of ends up starting to show up and come through is when you can... Uh, guide things with your own aesthetic and your own desires but at the same time you're uh you're aware that there are certain things that um you kind of can't help also um it's it's just the the quirks uh i mean it might be the limitations of your ability um and that's not necessarily to say that's a bad thing you know we everybody has limits to their ability uh, and that in reality is going to change what the final product is going to look like. And if you're able to uh, kind of work within those parameters and at the same time, like uh, move in a direction that you feel is exciting and interesting to you, then it all just kind of comes together. 
Um, I remember uh, talking to Joe Casada, the uh, uh, at the time was editor in chief at Marvel, um, and I was in a you know situation. Where I was fortunate to get to meet him and uh, show him some work that I had done. This was like really early when I was actually thinking I might even get into doing uh, comic books instead of uh, becoming a painter, um, which absolutely would not have been the right route for me. I realized that uh, that, that uh, drawing comics was is not the thing for me. But I remember him looking at the, the work I was doing and he kind of felt like I was doing too much studying from other comic artists and not enough studying from just direct reality. Uh, and he was pointing out, like, when you study from these other artists, you're, you're copying their mistakes and you don't necessarily understand what they're doing intentionally and what is just the way that they do it because they can't help it. And so you end up kind of absorbing a lot of these, these ticks that, um, you know, he was really just saying, like, you're going to, uh, do much better if you focus on learning your basics from from direct observation from reality rather than absorbing a lot of potential bad habits from from other people. I think it's 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 like a, a similar kind of thing. You know, it's like you learn almost in a way also how like I started with uh, working in a, a more kind of like tight and controlled um, process, and then over time. Uh, that gave me the flexibility to then start exploring other directions and trying other things. And it did also happen to come at a time when, you know, I was, my, my career was starting to um, progress, but I was feeling like I was getting a lot of jobs that were intended for someone else who was not available. And I was the second or third or fourth choice. And that's probably always going to happen, you know, but um, there was one artist in particular that uh, I, I think it was like three jobs in a row. This artist was not available and different clients, uh, but all who were trying to get that same artist came to me instead because he was unavailable. And um, I just remember, and, and, and that's always like a bad situation because they want something that's not quite what you're going to give them and you're you want to do it your way following your own sensibilities but they keep it, it, it's just a situation where you're almost guaranteed where everybody's going to come out a little bit not quite getting what they wanted from it and by the third one of those i just remember feeling really like frustrated at this 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 like being the guy who you go to because you couldn't get the guy that you really wanted. And having that happen several times in a row like that um, with different clients, one of whom, um, actually, I think most of whom I, I never worked with again because they didn't really want me in the first place. They just wanted someone who could do a reasonable approximation of this other person. And that was kind of a, a moment where I was at that time also doing all of these pieces in um, my gallery work that were radically different in in approach to what I was doing with my illustrations. And I just got to the point where I was just like, I'm just going to switch like all at once. I had been thinking like over time I might be able to like start slowly bringing some of this process into the other process. And, and then, you know, it, it really kind of became clear to me like, no, the problem here is that I am not enjoying this meticulous style and um clearly it's not it's not really standing out it's not demonstrating its own clear personality it's just a fairly acceptable copy of what some other people are already doing much better and you know if i want to really let my own voice come through and do something that people will um recognize as mine and then you know that's what you want is for people to go to you because you're the best person to do what you do um you don't want to be the person they go to because they couldn't get the person they really wanted and so i realized like if, if i'm going to do that i need to do things the way that i want to do things and uh i just switched like as like okay I've, I've spent a couple years now this was right at the end of 2011 so now i've been working as a professional for uh, at least four years, maybe like four or five years. Um, 
and uh, I decided I'm just going to build a whole new portfolio of work using this this other process that I had been developing through these um, paintings that I've been doing for these gallery shows. And yeah, I just, I remember it was like right around Christmas time. Uh, so there was not a lot going on. Everybody was kind of on vacation. And I just sat down and did a couple of paintings that was like the the um, concepts and, and uh, themes of my illustration work, but done in this completely other, uh, you know, process, um, which is fairly close to this, you know, painting that you're watching right here. Um, and it just felt so good. I, it, it, it really felt like uh, so right compared to, it, it, I didn't feel like I was holding my breath the way that I did when I was working with the other stuff. And this just really felt like it was just flowing out of me. And for about a year, I, on my uh, website, cause I was worried like, if clients are not expecting to see this and I hand this to them, they might be upset. And so on my website, I actually had uh, two separate pages, one for my old work and one for my new work. And for that, for the entire year of 2012, my website was set up with these almost like two different personalities on there. Um, and when I was asked to, any, any client who came hiring me for a job, I would say to them, you know, I want to show you, I, you probably are familiar with my older work, but I want to show you this new work that I've been doing. And with one exception, every other client in that entire year that I showed the new work, they were like, this looks amazing. Uh, yes, please go in this direction. And everybody uh, who said that when I did that work for them um, was really happy with the result. And so by the end of 2012, like one year after kind of making that switch, I just dumped all the the old work from my website and started over with with uh, this more kind of painterly uh, uh, approach. And, you know, there's, of course, I uh, still had a lot to learn uh, and a lot to develop. And it's interesting to me when I look back at the, the work I was doing in 2012 and also some of the stuff I was doing in the lead up to that when I was the, the gallery work I was doing, I actually see some interesting things there that somehow kind of fell off my radar and that I want to start actually getting back into exploring now. I was doing a lot more uh, experimentation with with palette knife and things being a lot kind of like messier and a lot more chaotic. And it's a little scary to do that when you're working on illustrations because you need some degree of predictability in order to make a deadline and in order to um, create a sketch and then create a final piece that follows that sketch. Like there are certain things that feel like the more you can, you know, contain the chaos, um, the easier it's going to go. But I don't know, maybe something gets a little lost when you, when you get a little too, uh, too contained. And so I'm starting to just kind of like explore that and think about that now a little bit more. I finally broke out the palette knife on my most recent painting and, um, might get into doing more of that. Anyway, I've been rambling on and this portrait is now uh, basically as, as done as it's gonna get. And um, yeah, there we go into the uh, final piece. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll figure out if I'm gonna re-release re those videos here on YouTube. But in any case, thanks for watching.